subsidized by, by the taxpayers. And in, in some respects, perhaps this is the right approach to do it. If I could take us into one other direction just for a minute as well, um, and, and perhaps this comes back to one of my, my areas of interest, because I'm on the Armed Services Committee. And one of the things that this particular administration failed to do when they announced their new program of canceling consolation for whatever new goal that they want to have in the future is they failed to communicate with other members of the administration and with other policies and programs within government to see what the impact would have in other government areas. And once again, I'm specifically talking about our military defense system. As I said in the very beginning, we forget that the people who build rockets and have the component parts to put a man into the moon are the same people who build the component parts and build rockets that shoot down incoming missiles from other countries. If indeed we are going, and, it, and once again, as was mentioned earlier, the industrial base that creates these jobs is not something you can turn on and off like a spigot on a water fountain. You can't just decide today we're going to have these scientists, tomorrow we'll fire them and turn it off, and then the next day we'll just open it up and they'll be there again. What we are doing if we decimate Constellation is we're decimating the industrial base that builds our Defense Department missiles at the same time. The House Authorization Bill has intent language that tries to quantify what this is because, to be honest, as we started our hearings this year on authorization bills, both for NASA as well as for the Defense Department, we simply asked the question that if indeed Constellation is, is taken out, what impact will it have on the military? And it was clear that the military had never been broached, they had never talked about this, they had not anticipated it. However, reports going over a year now, going back to Congress, it simply said that there would be devastating circumstances and harmful consequences if indeed Constellation was stopped for the military side. Now, in the language that will be presented in the uh, House Authorization Bill, it simply says that the best estimate we have right now is the cost of military defense on everything that deals with the missile, any kind of propulsion system, is between a 40 to 100 percent increase in the cost to the defense side of our nation if indeed we stop Constellation and you fire those 30,000 workers who are part of that industrial base. That simply means that anything that needs a solid rocket motor, an ICBM, the Navy missile system, double the cost of what it will take just to replace those motors, to replace the work and to keep that system functioning. Any kind of strategic missile that has propulsion as part of it, and I hate to say that, but that's every kind of missile that we have, the cost will increase 40 to 100 percent simply because we are losing the expertise and the industrial base and indeed, oftentimes those propulsion concepts have a fixed cost to them. So if indeed you have to have propulsion in there, there's a, there's a fixed cost. If you have less of that, the military will be picking up what is now being shared as far as the cost with, with NASA at the same time. Our land-based missile system, our kinetic energy system, even the fact of some of our laser systems in the future will have a negative impact simply because the, the industrial base that builds those missiles for our military is the same industrial base that builds the missiles, the component part, the labor, the propulsion system for NASA, for Constellation. You hurt one, we will hurt the other. And that was a factor that was never considered by the administration or NASA when they came up with their quick decision to try and stop Constellation for something else, some nebulous policy was in the future. Military or defense of this country is the role of Congress. It's a legitimate question. This administration should have asked those questions ahead of time before they announced the policy. They should have understood what the cost would be and had a plan to handle that cost. As it was, it kind of snuck up on everybody, and now people are trying to play catch up. And the best way of solving that problem is simply go with a winning program, which is Constellation, continue on with a goal that is safe and has a clear, concise goal message to it, don't lose the jobs, don't lose the industrial base, don't increase the cost for our military, and let us move forward in an organized, rational approach rather than this helter-skelter idea that takes place at some particular time. My colleague yield? If I'll yield, yes, I'd be happy to. The one thing I'm concerned about, uh, as my colleague knows, is the fact that this administration is making NASA a partisan issue in many ways. 
as you alluded to, I'm not sure who proposed this budget or who put it together, but they certainly did outreach. It seemed like a very small group of individuals in the White House over at OMB who made these decisions that have dramatic impacts uh, for our nation. As you alluded to, I don't think they talked to any of the defense contractors, particularly the ones that developed the, the, our, the missiles for our strategic nuclear deterrence. As I understood it, nothing. They heard nothing. Um, I represent the Johnson Space Center, the home of human spaceflight. Our center director, when I called him up on the 2nd of February just to sort of get how are people doing, what's the mood there, what, how, those type questions, asked him, what did you find out? I said, Pete, I found out about it when you did. I read the paper yesterday. And that's another point. I mean, Congress has the oversight rule. We're the power of the purse. And I'm unaware of any outreach from the administration to any member of Congress prior to this decision being made. And I'm a freshman here as a member of Congress, but I've been on the Hill for a number of years, and particularly in the military and the Navy. And I, one of the standard things was, if you're going to make a radical change in a program, you went and talked to the committees of jurisdiction, the chairman, the ranking member, and sort of at least gave them the courtesy of what you're planning to do. And I'm unaware of anything like that happening. And again, they're playing politics with this. This thing we're doing with the uh, termination liability, the Anti-Deficiency Act, where they are using, and we think it's unprecedented, we're doing some research to find out if it's ever been done in the past, but as my colleague knows, what's basically done is NASA has told the contractors, you're going to have to hold some money in reserve for termination liability. You can't spend that on developing rockets and human spaceflight. You're going to have to hold that in an account in case things get terminated. And what do the companies have to do? The money they were holding for September 30th is now going to be dried up sometime middle of August. The only solution they have is to lay off those people. And again, I don't want to be skeptical, but that gets the administration more of what they want. If those people go, we're going to have a hard time getting them back. The costs are going to go up. We need to stop this. I mean, we can't make NASA a partisan issue. It's been a bipartisan issue. That's its strength. Every American loves human spaceflight, is proud of America, what we've done in in orbit and what we've done on the moon. And we've got to go beyond that. And Constellation, as my colleague alluded to, is the best, most tried way so far to do it. There's no reason to get off that path. I yield back. If I could uh, re reclaim the time very briefly here again, and I, once again, I appreciate you making those points because they are spot on accurate. Congress has made its voice very clear last year when we specifically told NASA Constellation is our program of record and you will not cut funding to NASA or to Constellation. It is very clear that Congress has never changed that position, nor do I think, well, this is speculation, but nor do I think we would given our own choice of what to do. But as the gentleman from Texas clearly illustrated, there are some things that NASA is doing right now that appear, I, I don't want to try and ascribe motives, but they appear clearly to try and force the issue so that by the time Congress goes through its process of coming up with a budget and appropriations process and language directing what the, what the bureaucracies will do, in this case NASA, that this will be a fait accompli. So the idea of, of withholding the derivatives was not a reduction of, of their concepts, of their contracts, but it had the same effect. The idea of taking the constellation manager and reassigning him had a specific effect. And then, as you alluded to, the idea of telling companies that they're going to have to hold out closing costs, which has never been done in uh, NASA before. And in fact, there was only one time where Congress did tell them in some way, shape, or form that they needed to close the program down, but that's when Congress told them to close the program down, not when they were trying to close it down before Congress has a chance to react to it. But what that would do is simply force them to fire people now so the industrial base is gone before anything takes place. And that is a strange approach for any kind of executive branch of the, of the of government to do when the legislative branch has yet to give them any clear direction that that's what we want to do or has spoken. In fact, everything we have said to, so far is the exact contrary to that. So I appreciate that. that. If I could just put one last thing and then I'll yield to the gentleman from Texas again. The government apparently uh, put out the National Space Policy of the United States today. It's an interesting document. It says that we should have a robust and competitive commercial space sector, which is good. But I promise you, if you take all the jobs away from those who are doing Constellation, there will not be a robust or competitive space program. They say that we should strengthen U.S. leadership in space-related science. And once again, we have said over and over again, if indeed you stop Constellation, you are ceding leadership 
in space-related science, we're not creating relationship. They say we should retain skilled space professionals. Once again, what is happening today is the exact opposite of this effort or this directive. They say we should invigorate, reinvigorate U.S. leadership. You don't reinvigorate something if you destroy the program that is our program of record that will move us towards a leadership position. I find this document unusual. Now, I haven't had the chance to read everything that is in it, but certainly certain things come glaring out in the front, uh, in the process of just skimming through it, saying that what we are doing is not necessarily what our words are. If our words here was indeed what our policy is, I'd be very happy and content. But what I see happening is not what this policy statement says that we should be doing. Sometimes I wonder if we really do understand what we're dealing, what we are doing in space, and we need to recognize the significance of it, the importance of it, and the importance it has in other aspects of the government and to our citizens and to the future, yes, to sir, inspiring yes, kids. Yeah. I will if you I back call to you very briefly again, I'm just very scared that this administration has turned NASA into a partisan political football, and it's never been that way. Uh, let me read just another quote again from the letter I read earlier. That was uh, put together by Walt Cunningham who was one of our first return to flight astronauts after the Apollo 1 disaster. Uh, Walt flew in the next Apollo mission. And he's been very adamant, very clear about how he feels, uh, how this, this change, this radical budget is going to affect our human spaceflight future. And let me just read the three paragraphs I think that are most important. Again, Walt and about 30 other astronauts from every program, every human spaceflight program we have signed this letter. Too many men and women have worked too hard and sacrifice too much to achieve America's preeminence in space, only to see that effort needlessly thrown away. We urge you to demonstrate the vision and the determination necessary to keep our nation at the forefront of human space exploration with ambitious goals and the proper resources to see them through. This is not the time to abandon the promise of space frontier for a lack of will or an unwillingness to pay the price. Yet that's exactly what this budget proposal does. And I'm very scared that this has become a partisan issue that doesn't serve America well, that doesn't serve our future well. As my colleague alluded, Republican Congress endorsed the Constellation, Democrat Congress endorsed the Constellation. The, you hear people out there say, this was George Bush's plan. Yes, it was his plan, but it's been endorsed by, again, a Republican Congress and a Democrat Congress. It's not Bush's plan, it's America's plan. And we need to see it through. If I could just reclaim for just one, protect, one particular second right here, once again, and I, I appreciate you bringing that point out, I think the pushback or the outrage in Congress has been a bipartisan pushback and outrage. Republicans and Democrats alike have said the, the approach this administration is taking is not necessarily the right approach because indeed, Constellation is a safer, better system than Space Shuttle. It is the new way forward. It shows what is the best and the brightest that this country has to offer. It is something that makes us good and makes us noble. It is the direction we should go into the future. And for us to back off now for some program that is not clear, is not understandable, has no discernible goals, that's just not the way a country moves forward. It's indeed the way a country moves backwards, and this country should not be moving backwards. I appreciate the gentleman from Texas leadership on this particular issue, everything that he's been doing in organizing our review, our reports, some of our complaints too, as we, as we try and say what we need to do is do that which moves the country forward and ennobles us as a people. Constellation does that. A clear space mission does that. A mission emphasizing safety for astronauts does that. That's what we need to continue on, and I'm sorry, but what NASA is asking us to do right now does not meet those goals. I yield back for any concluding statements the gentleman. Yes, sir, I'll be very has. brief here. I just want to, um, you know, you're very aware of the uh, Orion pad abort, the very successful launch test we had. I believe was it the late April, early May. Mm -hmm. uh, good chance you could get a Time magazine from this upcoming year, and that's going to be on the cover of that magazine. That was a flawless, flawless test. In fact, if you remember. Uh, the rocket got off the pad so quickly at White Sands that the cameras that are there to track rockets, I mean, these, they're there to track all rockets, couldn't keep up with it because it was moving so darn fast. 
And we've, that's the program of record. And I'll just conclude by saying what I tell people all across this country. The president and the administration have a voice in this process, but they don't have the final word. The United States Congress has the final word, and I'm confident that we're going to, at the end of the day, Constellation is still going to be the program of record. I thank my colleague and yield back my time to him. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, appreciate your time and efforts. We yield back. Upon the Speaker's announced policy of January 6, 2009, the gentlewoman from Ohio, Ms. Fudge, is recognized for 60 minutes as the